Let me give you two sentences in English. He is sitting on the table. And sit down, please. We have the same verb in English, sit. In German, we have to use two different verbs because it's two different concepts. If we look at the verb to lie and to lay, we kind of have a similar thing in English, but it's still a bit different in German. So we have the verbs to sit, lie, lay, and stand. So this video is about these three important, very important verbs of position and their six counterparts in German. We're also going to take the opportunity to look at what we call reflexive pronouns, reflexive verbs, which these or some of these six verbs actually are. Let's go. Okay, welcome to Mixed Languages. I am Mick. So today's topic are these verbs of position. Lie, sit, stand. Let's start by looking at lie. Because in English we actually also have lay, right? This is another verb, to lie and to lay. We also have lay as the past tense of lie. I lay on the bed yesterday. That's kind of confusing, right? But we, if we look at the two different verbs, lie and lay, that's like in German, we have liegen und legen. We can first of all talk about the idea of transitive versus intransitive. Lie is an intransitive verb which means that it does not take an object, right? Somebody lies on the bed, for example, and uh, you cannot lie something on the bed. So you cannot use an object with lie, but you actually have to use an object with lay. This is because lay is, an, is a transitive verb. Transitive has to take object. Intransitive does not take an object, right? So. To form a correct sentence with lay, we have to say, I lay something on the table, for example. We can also look at these two words from another angle. We can talk about state and change of state. State would be lie, right? You are in a state of lying. You are there. You lie. Something lies on the table. And the change of state would be lay, right? You have something in your hand and you lay it somewhere. So in German, right, the state would be liegen and the uh, change of state would be legen. And whenever there's a change of state, we have to use legen, the transitive verb, which corresponds to lay, which is not the case in English. I'll show you the examples now so you will see what I mean. First example here, das Buch liegt auf dem Tisch. Das Buch liegt auf dem Tisch. Right here we have liegen, liegt, the right conjugated form, right? Liegt with a T. Liegt auf dem Tisch. And this is a state, right? It's in the state of lying. It's constant. And then we can take another a sentence where we use legen, where we have a change of state, right? I lay or I put the book on the table. Ich lege das Buch auf den Tisch. Ich lege das Buch auf den Tisch. And here we have uh, to use the word legen, right? Because we have a change of state, we use the transitive verb with the object das Buch. Now let's talk about a person, right? A person instead of a book. We can, for example, say that der Mann liegt auf dem Bett. Der Mann liegt auf dem Bett. Right here again is a state, we have to use liegen. And in English it would be the man lies, right? In English, if we see this happening, we would still use lie. The man lies down, for example, right? The man lies down. But in German, we have a change of state here from standing to lying position. So we have to use the transitive verb legen. And the object in this case would be the reflexive object, sich. Der Mann legt sich auf das Bett. Der Mann legt sich auf das Bett. Okay, we cannot say that the man liegt auf dem Bett when we want to talk about the change of state of him moving from standing to lying. We have to use legen, the man legt sich auf das Bett, right? And this is, uh, as I said, uh, reflexive, the reflexive pronoun, sich. We can talk quickly about the reflexive pronouns in German. If it were I laying myself on the bed, right? literally translated, I would say mich, ich lege mich auf das Bett. 
If it were you, it would be dich. Du legst dich auf das Bett. If it were he, like the sentence we had here, right? Er legt sich auf das Bett. Sie legt sich auf das Bett. She. And then we would be, wir legen uns auf das Bett. Wir legen uns auf das Bett. Ihr legt euch. Ihr legt euch auf das Bett. Und sie legen sich auf das Bett. Okay, so these were the reflexive pronouns. Very important because we have a lot of reflexive verbs in German. And now let's talk about the next verb, to sit. Here in German we have two forms again. We have sitzen and setzen. Sitzen being the state, the intransitive form, and setzen being the change of state and the transitive form. Examples again, right? If we have here the man again, and let's now take it in the first person, I, just to vary a bit here. Ich setze mich auf den Stuhl. Ich setze mich auf den Stuhl. Right? This is the change of state. So we use the transitive verb, setzen. And now we can use the state. It is, he's in a state of sitting, right? So we can use also the intransitive verb, sitzen. Er sitzt jetzt auf dem Stuhl. Er sitzt jetzt auf dem Stuhl. You also see that uh, we actually have to change here the, the case of the chair, right? Ich setze mich auf den Stuhl. This is accusative. And ich sitze auf dem Stuhl is dativ, auf dem Stuhl, right? That's a whole topic in itself. Also a bit difficult to understand for non-German speakers. And then we have the last word, which is to stand. Again, we have two verbs in German. We have stehen and we have stellen. Stehen being the intransitive state verb and stellen being the transitive change verb. We can again use our friend here to help us understand it. Imagine now that we are, this is, this is more than one person and uh, it includes you, right? So you would say, we, we, okay? What is he doing now? Wir stellen uns in die Ecke. Wir stellen uns in die Ecke, right? We place ourselves in the corner. You can see here by using the verb place that we actually have the same idea in English. Place ourselves, right? Ourselves, this is reflexive, ourselves. I place myself, he places himself, we place ourselves, and so on. And we have to use stellen because that is the change of state verb. Whereas now we can say, we can talk about the state he, they are in. Jetzt stehen wir in der Ecke. Jetzt stehen wir in der Ecke. Right, so here we have the verb stehen, which is the, the state we're in. And uh, we would also again have in der Ecke, which is dativ. Whereas the sentence before, which denotes in die Ecke, was accusative. Okay, now you know about the basic idea of these transitive and intransitive verbs for positioning. The next step is to learn how to use them correctly in a sentence. And uh, as with anything, right, you can, if you just know it mentally, if you know something only mentally, it's not really a skill. To master something, we need to really train it. We need to exercise it. Just like riding a bike, you can watch millions of hours of uh, professional cyclists, for example, in the Tour de France, riding up and down. And if you have never r ridden a bike uh, on your own, you will not know how to ride a bike, right? You will have mental knowledge, but not physical knowledge abilities. It's kind of the same with language learning. In order to make something stick, you have to use it. You have to use it a lot. You have to practice a lot. And this uh, might sound like a lot of work, right? It might sound um, yeah, difficult, right? It might, might sound tough. And wouldn't it just be nice if we could just download the language to our brains and wouldn't have to make any effort? No, I myself wouldn't really like that. I don't want to turn into a robot. Our society is kind of forcing us to turn into robots more and more. I myself, I prefer to be human. I don't know about you, but I really do prefer to be human. And this includes the amazing journeys of learning something. Not just having it given to you. Not just taking a pill and then you don't need to eat anymore, for example. Which is a thing they have talked about in the media. I've heard about this idea. It's just 
weird to me, right? It's just, uh, why would I want that? So if you, like me, would like to fight against becoming a useless robot, make sure you watch the sequel to this video where we're going to look at techniques where you can actually train this. You can actually train it and make it stick totally. You can also train the other verb tenses. We haven't talked about this here. We've only talked about the present tense here, but the past tense forms, the past tense and the present perfect tense. As always, like the video if you think it deserves a like. Danke fürs Zuschauen. Bis zum nächsten Mal.